Welcome to Business Reporter's Sustainability Future of Business Campaign. I'm Keith Kosinski. U.S. President Joe Biden has set out plans to complete America's transition to clean energy by 2035 and pledge $2 trillion of federal investment to drive the green revolution. But that revolution started more than a decade ago, not in the halls of Congress, but on the ground, in communities that wanted to take control over their green energy future. MCE has pioneered a model for providing renewable electricity with strong local benefits and competitive prices. Its experts claim that if we want to win over hearts and minds for green energy, we will need to adopt a community-oriented approach to generating and distributing power. Our guest today is Don Wise, CEO of MCE. Welcome, Don. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. The current system of energy production and distribution has worked reasonably well over the last 100 years. Why do you believe it needs to change? Well, the current system of energy distribution may seem to be working well on the surface, but underneath there have been a lot of negative impacts uh, to our environment uh, and to the people in our communities. Um, particularly impacts related to climate change that's created more extreme weather events. Um, And then also the system of fossil fuel generation has a lot of impacts on the nearby communities. And this disproportionately impacts indigenous communities and people of color. Um, We've seen health impacts uh, such as asthma, cancers, and other sorts of impacts um, that seem linked to our system of energy production. And a transition to cleaner energy sources can have a huge impact on our community's health. And one of the fundamental reasons for this is that we haven't had a lot of community involvement in the decision making around energy. Energy decisions have been made in silos, typically by corporations that are um, driven by shareholder profits rather than health in the community. So what's the alternative then? Well, the alternative is a local energy provider that makes decisions uh, with the involvement of the community. An example of this is the Community Choice Aggregation Model, or CCA. And this model is uh, operated with a board of directors that are the decision makers elected by their community to make decisions around energy generation. All of their meetings are held in public. Um, There's a lot of transparency and there's a lot of engagement uh, from the community, letting uh, the Community Choice Program know what the needs are uh, and what types of energy we should be including in our power mix. Can you define the community aggregation model and how it works? The community choice model is set up so that a local energy provider can make decisions about um, the energy purchases uh, for its community. MCE is an example of this community choice model. We are the the first uh, community choice program that got started uh, in California back in 2010. And since our launch, um, there's been a huge increase in the number of community choice programs around the state. We have over 23 operating right now, serving customers. And actually, one out of every four energy customers in California is currently served by a community choice program. So that's how rapidly this idea has really sparked and taken off. Um, And it's resulted in a lot more clean energy being used for our communities and most importantly, it's, in, it's resulted in a lot of community engagement helping to drive the decision making around energy. How does MCE come into the picture and what is your role? So I'm the CEO of MCE and I was around during the early launch of the program, the early formulation of the program. So it's been really exciting and rewarding to see how much impact we can make um, in our communities just by redirecting the source of energy um, coming in to um, to feed our communities. We've been able to double the amount of renewable energy that is uh, coming to our customers And we also offer a 100% renewable uh, option for folks that um, want all of their energy to be tied to renewable sources. Um, We've gotten a lot of solar projects built um, right here in our community and throughout California. Uh, Also wind projects, um, geothermal, landfill waste to energy, 
lot of different resources um, that create uh, a supply stream that's reliable and steady and actually relatively low cost uh, for our customers. Can you illustrate this with a case study for us? Sure. I think an important case study that, that shows the benefits we can have is the MCE Solar One project. This is a large solar installation that um, we were able to put into uh, one of our communities, Richmond, California. Um, Richmond is a part of MCE's service area and has a brownfield site um, at a refinery that really couldn't be used for anything else. Um, we were able to um, get access to 65 acres of this site for a 25 year term. Um, and in partnership with um, the, uh, the site host, we were able to build this large solar facility that is supplying uh, the nearby customers with solar energy. But more importantly, we were able to create a lot of local jobs through this project. It took a couple of years to plan the project before we broke ground. And during that time, we partnered with a local training program that helped um, train folks in the community to be ready to work on this project when the time came. And we were able to employ over 365 uh, folks in building this project. And some of the folks from this community that got trained up and worked on the project were then hired to work on other projects um, in other areas. So it's been a great way to create green career pathways for people in our community that want to get into the energy sector. Can this model be successful in states that are less ambitious with their sustainability policies compared to California? Absolutely. I think that what we are accomplishing here at MCE would benefit every community. We've been able to source energy at very competitive rates. Um, most of the time, we are the cheaper option than uh, our competing uh, providers. We choose energy sources that are affordable, and then we choose programs that really have a tangible benefit in the community. Um, and I think that the programs that we've launched and the energy sources that we've chosen would be a good fit for um, many communities around the country and around the globe um, while making things more affordable. And the real key is to involve the community in the decision making because in many cases, it's the frontline communities, um, the folks on the front lines that know what the solutions are. And if you can connect those folks with the decision makers, you can really um, see a lot of positive change. The Biden administration has incredibly ambitious green energy goals. Um, do you think that they're viable, number one? And number two, what would you say to policymakers? I think the ideals that the Biden administration is proposing around clean energy and environmental justice have a tremendous chance of success. We know that because we've been able to implement those ideas here at MCE over the last 10 years, uh, even without that federal support. And it's been extremely successful. Um, we've been able to double the amount of renewable energy that our communities have access to. We've been able to, to install many, many uh, different renewable facilities in our community, creating jobs. And we've been able to involve our community to address environmental justice and social justice issues at the same time. Don, it's truly been a pleasure talking with you about MCE and the future of green energy. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure.